So in the last one, we created our connection to MongoDB and also created our Express backend. Now we're going to create a model for our user. So we're going to go to the API folder and in here, we're going to create a new folder and that's going to be called models. All right. And the first model that we're going to be creating is going to be a user model. So uh, normally you remember uh, from my past videos, it might be like user.js, but I'm going to make a naming convention here. And this is a really good programming practice so that you don't confuse yourself with so many files when this, uh, you know, application grows in size. So model, uh, essentially what you could call this as is since it's a user model, you could say user.model.js. If you do this, it's still going to be able to do it. And, uh, you know, everything is working. So now what we're going to do is we're going to create our model here. So what we're going to do is we're going to import mongoose uh, from mongoose and we're going to uh, make a user schema and we're going to say new schema, uh, new mongoose schema. And in here, we're going to, uh, you know, provide some things. So, so the first thing that we're going to be providing here is, all right. So normally, I mean, what I messed up here, I think, okay. Why is it all red? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have this and in here, we're going to have, first of all, which is the username. Now, actually, you could do this or either this. Wait a minute. So you could either do like this. Okay, <laughs> so like that and then close this up like that. All right. So I think uh, we got it taken care of. Um, yeah. Okay. Just uh, just go back and over here in the bottom. Well, you could add so many uh, things over here. So the first thing that I want is the username. So the username for the user. Uh, and I just add, added this, and you know it just automatically does it. It's going to be a type of string. It's going to be required. It means it's important, and you can't miss it. Unique. It, you know, two people can't have the same username, and that's it. And after that, we want the next thing, which is an email. And, you know, we want the same thing, which is um, type string required and unique true. And now we're going to go the next one, which is. Um, uh, I don't know why let's keep adding. So uh, we're going to have the password. And. We have. You know, type string required true. Um, and people could have the same passwords as well. And then after that, um, we want a very special thing right uh, here before the closing tag. Um, so right after here. So what I want here is something which is called um, timestamps and true. The reason why I want this as true is that this allows me to uh, stay my save my uh, time of creation and the time that I updated my model so that I could use it for later on cases like if I want to sort the data based on the most latest entry and you know that's going to be pretty useful when I do timestamps true so basically it creates two more extra fields which is the time of creation of the data and also the one more which allows us to track what was updated at which time so perfectly done. Um, so after this, uh, you have your model created again. Remember there was a extension, which is called prettier. Um, you could just format document and it automatically formats it for you. Uh, right after this, uh, you could export this model and you could say, uh, const user. And then we say mongoose dot model. And then we have now the thing is, if you do capital user, you don't have to give any plural. It's just user in MongoDB. It's automatically going to place an S over there and it's going to be called users with lowercase. And you could see over here, we have the user schema here. The last thing we want to do is export that default user. And that's it. We have our model created perfectly. OK, so now um, now that we have our, you know, we have our model, we have to go to the next part. And the next part is to create a test API route. Um, so uh, if you go to the index.js file, which is gonna be on the bottom. Um, so essentially, if you go to the index.js file, which is right in here in the API, um, and you, you see the server is running, let's create a test API. Now, if I say app.get and I say forward slash rec and rest, which is uh, response, uh, now, uh, response request request is from the uh, client 
you give to the server and the response is from the service of response and uh hello dot world uh you know hello world uh this is being served on the you know local host first port so if i you know if i assume like everything is running it is running i go back here and if i go here and i've refreshed it now you can see now in the port uh, you know the main page it's called hello world because it's coming from um this part here hello world right so this is how you know the api is created you could actually put in something else like suppose if i give slash test and then i say hello test okay so and if i uh go here now this is not going to work again it's going to say cannot get but if i go slash test it would say hello test okay so this is working but the thing is that this is not really great because once one is that you know the the complete address is different from the front end this one is localhost port 5173 and this is the back end right this is completely different right um but the thing is that i could add a proxy so that i don't have to uh, tag in uh you know tag in the localhost port 3000 and you could just uh have the slash api slash test and all that so we're gonna do this on and don't worry uh if you don't understand what that means i'm gonna go and explain it really easy and plain terms really simple plain terms all right so now what we're going to do is, like I said, this is not a good way to create API endpoints because if I have like 10, 20 APIs, I'm going to have my index.js going on and on. And that's not going to be good. So not the best practice to create your API routes. Um, and then it's just going to, you know, ultimately make your index.js file too long. Um, a better way to do this is to separate the route, uh, separate the API route uh, and as well as the function, which is the the function over here so api route which is this and the function created in two separate folders um i mean two separate places so let's go in the um over here and then go in the api inside the api we have routes so we'll create a new folder in here and we'll call this as routes and inside that route we'll have uh our first route and we'll go here and we'll say file we'll say because it's based on the user it's going to be a user route so i'm going to say user model dot routes and then we say dot js if i do this um you know we got this and um you know you could essentially create your user route like that you could in, uh since we need express we'll have to ex import express uh from express and um you know we have our const router and we have express router and then what we could do is we could say router.get and we have test what we were just doing. And, you know, we put this inside here. So it's slash test request and response. Exactly the same thing that was written in the index. But now from my index.js, I don't actually have to do any of this thing anymore. All I have to do now is just say app.use. Okay. And I have to, I could remove all of this. Okay. So yeah. So I'm just going to have to say app.use. And what we have here is, um, we have the, the, the first one, which is the, um, slash test, right? Um, which is, this is the route slash test. So what we can do is just forward slash here and And the next one we could call is use. Uh, now we actually need to ex uh, export this route. So we have to export default router. If we do this, we have to call it in the here. Um, so we could say, okay, so e from express, I don't know why this came. Um, so import uh, user, user router, we call it. I'll call it user router since it's basically dealing with user. So I'm going to say import user router from, and then we have this uh, routes and user.routes.js. And then you could use it here, user router. And that should do the trick. Okay. If I do slash API, and then if I say, Okay, so now I'm going to have slash API slash user. And then over here, I'm going to have slash test. 
all right so let's see how this goes so back in the environment now this is not going to work anymore so i'm going to go slash api slash users still it's not going to work um it's actually going to be here and you can see slash user not users and then slash test so slash api slash user slash test and you can see hello test is now being called from there this is a much better way to write the code now of course you don't need this uh, logic which is the function logic and this is all called a controller you don't need it here you could actually make a separate place for this as well so we're going to actually do that um so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to create this separately as well so i'm going to go here into the uh, api folder and i'm going to call one folder which is called controllers so controllers and inside of this folder we have user.controller so it's basically um yeah so actually not controller um just a second so in the controllers we have user.controller which is the you know can think of controller as a function uh, logic controller.js user.controller because I wrote be, it's based on the user that's why I'm giving user user right the model is based on user um, and now I could write this in the controller part so all I have to do is you could uh, essentially get out this entire thing and just cut this and this is okay over here you could over here just uh, you know type in export uh const test and we have request response and we have send uh you know test route all right response dot send and we have test route and this is path api slash route slash user dot okay now all we got to do is uh if we want to use this we'll have to go to the user controller and all we have to do is import it here so we say import the controller um which is um comma and the test is the function right and if i click on this this is the thing that it needs to be so it's called test function so test from dot dot, dot slash you know back and then controllers and then user dot controller and one important thing is you need to have .js here at the end or it's going to give you some errors so that's perfectly fine and um you know now it should work and it should say test route uh being called okay and i'm gonna now run this thing so it's essentially running it crashed so many times uh but now if i go slash api slash uh, user and then the test controller if i refresh this test route being called super cool super awesome we have done really great progress so far and uh, you know the application is looking really amazing and this is how the right you know the right way to create controller and models so you know you have a single model you have a route and then you have controllers and this is the way i wanted to express it out um you know we're getting better and better every day so just keep practicing keep coding and you know stick to coding cleverly keep subscribing <laughs>